يحيى خذ الكتاب بقوة وآتيناه الحكم صبيا إذ قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك ورافعك إلي محمد رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم The Quran the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the real and the most benefiting way of nurturing our souls. We are in need of it. We are more in need of it than the fact that we need food and drink for our bodies. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this Quran for us to seek guidance from it, to understand it, to reflect upon it, and to live our life exactly according to what the Quran is calling us to do. Whether it's things with our hearts, things that we say, physical actions, and to understand the Qur'an, we need the Sunnah, the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Because the Prophet ﷺ, his manners was the Qur'an. As Aisha radiallahu she said, when she was asked about the manners of the Prophet ﷺ, she said, كَانَ خُلُقُ Quran, His khuluq, his manners was the Qur'an. But when you read the Qur'an, how can you see that practiced uh, physically? In every aspect of our life, this is where the knowledge of the deen of Islam to know the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And also we learn the ways of the Qur'an, how to establish the tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship, what the evidence is. The evidence is when it's established against the disbelievers to corner them, for, for them not to have any excuse whatsoever, except either to humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believe in Him alone, or then they make it very clear that they deserve to be among the people of the Hawfire. So therefore the bayinat and the clear signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are revealed in the Quran. What is left is for us as Muslims to spread the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to understand it, to reflect upon it and to act upon it and to spread the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran for people to read, for people to use their intellect and reason and thinking to see that this is the ultimate truth Nothing can stand against the evidences and the values and the manners and everything that is mentioned in the Quran. We are in Surah Al-Nahl. It's a surah that also mentioned the bounties and the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how these favors of Allah leads the people when they recite the Quran to the, the great fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. We stopped at verse number 19. So we'll go through, inshallah ta'ala, verses number 19 to verses, verse number 23. From 19 to 23, to try to reflect and to understand the meanings of these verses and to make it affect our hearts. And they are straightforward and great benefits for us if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will for us to benefit from it. Let's go to verse number 19. In Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu ya'lamu ma tusirruna wa ma tu'alinun. Which means, and Allah knows what you conceal and what you declare. Verses are in a context. And the context of these verses, or this verse, is after mentioning great bounties of Allah for the human beings, signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings, things that are subjected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings. For what reason? For people to acknowledge that it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that they would humble themselves to the uh, power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Him alone. So after mentioning that if you count the favors of Allah, you won't be able to enumerate it whatsoever, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver, the most merciful, then this verse, verse number 19 says, وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تُسِرُّونَ وَمَا تُعْلِنُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you tusirun, what you conceal, وَمَا تُعْلِنُونَ and what you declare. The verse starts with Wallah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that encompasses all of the names of Allah. And that's such a powerful one that includes all the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and why that 
the, the verse starts with this to bring this reality in our hearts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the only one that knows يعلم, and ya'lam in the present tense that this is not just something in the past this is present this is past this is future at all times and it's continuously happening Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows مَا تُسِرُّونَ This is addressing the human beings. What you تُسِرُّونَ A sir is the secret, something secret, something hidden. So you don't know what I'm thinking about. You don't know my whims and the same thing for me towards you. Even the closest person. You know, your wife can be thinking about something, your children. This is something that human beings, they don't have that ability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that knows what you conceal, what you keep it as a secret. Whether it's you disclose it to someone or you keep it to yourself. وَمَا تُعْلِنُونَ And what you declare. All of that is not hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. He's the all-hearer, the all-seer. This is a fact. So this is a matter of belief. To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his names and attributes. And that he subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of all things. So therefore the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. And that creates this consciousness that should be present in the hearts of the believers. If you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you conceal and what you declare, what's going to happen then? What is the outcome of that truthfulness in that belief? That we will make sure that our secrets, what's in our hearts, what people don't know about us, should be the same as what we declare. Meaning when it comes to matters of al-Iman, faith, the love of Allah, hope for the rewards from Allah, the fear of Allah, to be religious and righteous, because we can easily deceive people. We can look like we're righteous, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts. And that's why because of our weakness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not command us to check what's in the hearts of the people. This is commanding, which is or a command that beyond one's capacity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not uh, you know, command the people or make the people have uh, an obligation or something like that, that it does not able, have the ability to bear something beyond the capacity of the human beings. So therefore we are only uh, to judge one another based on what we see physically. So what people say, what people do as far as their actions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts. But when it comes to our individual self, like if I talk about myself, I know of myself more than what I know about people because I know what's, my heart, what's in my heart. But I don't know what's in the hearts of the people. So that means what? I need to be more busy with purifying my heart than to accuse others of being deviants and so on, unless there's a benefit, of course, to warn against deviants and so on. But to be sincere and to seek the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to overlook our hearts. Because this is what we need to take care of and to purify. And whether we really know our hearts or not, because we don't, sometimes in many cases, we might think of ourselves that we're so humble when we're arrogant. Or that we are this and we're not. So how to make sure that we know ourselves? Read the Qur'an. The Qur'an would expose what's in our hearts. Because it talks about the human beings. And every time a verse in the Qur'an talks about the human beings, Make this as if it's yourself. So you would take the remedy and the medicine for arrogance and that is to humble yourself and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge encompasses everything. So whether you secretly upon something or you declare something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. So this is a matter of belief and actions to be established as a result of that. The verses is basically establishing the evidences of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and part of establishing the true evidences is to refute the, the ways of the disbelievers or those who associate partners with Allah, they have, they're upon nothing but that's by the mercy of Allah so that the matter becomes very clear. So by the next verse, verse number 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about those who invoke other than Allah, those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَخْلُقُونَ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ And those they invoke other than Allah creates nothing and they themselves are created. وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Those who they invoke, يَدْعُونَ from a dua, those who they invoke, those who they make dua to. 
those who they call upon min dunillah other than Allah la yakhluquna shay'an wa hum yakhluqun they don't create anything and they themselves are created so because this is a matter of uh, you know consensus among all human beings that's something that you don't really uh, to exert yourself to to believe or to be convinced of it there is two things there is the creator and there's the creation the creation are not creators the creation are creation they are created by Allah and the only creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once a person is upon this and this is by necessity as we said this is knowledge by necessity it's not something that needs for someone to be convinced of it because we see the creation of Allah we see ourselves that we are not creators of ourselves we did not create ourselves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us so if we are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that means we don't create anything the same thing other than Allah that these idol worshippers they worship right they don't create anything Isa alayhi salam the son of Mary did not create anything that uh, whoever they associate partners with Allah idol worshippers those who go to saints in, in the graves to ask from them these people those who are dead they did not create anything and they are themselves created so how can they invoke them besides Allah that means it's such an evil crime for someone to make dua to other than Allah because the dua is the ibad and dua huwa al ibad as the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam he said and dua is the ibad and the dua whether it's invoking or praising in in the state of worship ibadah the ibadah is to be done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sujood salah slaughtering uh, anything is to be done only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah seeking rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and these idols whether it's for the people of Quraysh or anyone till the day of judgment images of righteous people that they built for whatever reason to remind themselves of the righteous ones and things like this and they start worshipping it besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking blessing from it seeking to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these idols when it's being worshipped so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed all of these evidences for them very simple and very clear way how the way the Quran is related to al khalq is the creation you know once you establish this then everything comes after that in place as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says are they created from nothing or are they the creators so we're not created from nothing because nothing does not do anything it's nothing right so therefore we are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody can claim that they created themselves so why worship other than Allah why worship a creation of Allah when you can worship the creator of the heavens and the earth who deserves to be worshipped creation of Allah or the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala it's again it's something by necessity well, what is meant by necessity is is not something that we can can have differences of opinions based on our intellect and reason you know it does not have any choice but to be forced not forced physically but we have it's like when someone says uh, you know one is less than two this is that's it that's the end of it and it's the same thing here so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَالَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَخْلُقُونَ شَيْئًا Not even a house fly, not even something smaller than that, شَيْئًا anything وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ And they themselves are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have been created. And more of these idols that they worship besides Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse, verse number 21, أَمْوَاتٌ غَيْرُ أَحْيَاءٌ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ which means they are in fact dead, not alive, and they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. They worship dead people. They worship someone that is dead, and this is the norm of what people usually worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worship images of those who passed away, those who died, images of prophets, righteous ones, whatever there is. So they are dead. Amwatun. They are not alive. Amwatun by itself is sufficient. They are dead. That means they're not alive. So why mentioning غَيْرُ أَحْيَاء that they're not alive after mentioning that they are dead? It's what the human beings are in need to be awakened 
from the forgetfulness that they're upon. So we need both. So they are dead, they are not alive. The same thing as the previous verse when it says لا, when it says لا يخلقون شيئا وهم يخلقون. They don't create anything and they are themselves created. So here أموات غير أحياء. They are dead, they're not alive. You know, even if they're alive as human beings, right, it is not permissible to invoke them besides Allah because they are creation of Allah. But still also, how can they do such an evil thing? And and they do not even perceive, they don't even feel, they don't even know when they will be resurrected. Because the knowledge of resurrection is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not even the closest angel, Jibreel alayhi salam, does not know when the hour will be established. It's all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the creator of the heavens and the earth. وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ Shu'ur is to feel something, is to perceive something. أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ When they will be resurrected. Meaning those who passed away, those who died. And it shows how, again, you compare. There's no comparison. The creator of the heavens and the earth is to be worshipped. These idols, these images that they worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't deserve any of that because they are creation of Allah. And we'll stop here inshallah ta'ala for this till we go to break and come back and continue with these verses that establish the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So stay with us inshallah. Muhammad Rasulullah Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Welcome back and with verses in Surah Al-Nahl from verse number 19 to 23, establishing the clear evidence that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship with mentioning some of the attributes of Allah, comparing that to what they invoke besides Allah, in which what they invoke besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are nothing but a creation of Allah, they don't create anything. They are themselves created. They are dead. They're not alive. They don't even perceive when they will be resurrected. So how can they help anyone when they cannot even help themselves? They themselves in need of the forgiveness of Allah. They themselves need of the mercy of Allah. So how can they offer anything to any other human beings? Then after establishing this and before that the favors of Allah, the signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, universal signs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, then the powerful verse, verse number 22, then says, إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ فَالَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ مُنْكِرَةٌ وَهُمْ مُسْتَكْبِرُونَ Which means, your God is one God, but those who do not believe in the hereafter, their hearts are disapproving and they are arrogant. إِلَهُكُمْ إِلَهُ وَاحِدٌ Your God is one God, and the word ilah is, uh, you know, means the one to be worshipped. Your ilah, the one that you worship, the one that you should worship. Because your God is one God, it can be deceiving to some. Because many people, they would say that. But when it comes to worship, they worship other than Allah. Right? So, ilahukum ilahu wahid, which means the one that you should worship, the one that you ought to worship, is only one, ilahun wahid. He's one ilah, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the creator of all things. And he's the unknower, the owner of all things, the one that has the dominion of the heavens and the earth. All belong to Allah. Ilahukum ilahun wahid. And that's what fits perfectly the fitrah, the pure nature of the human beings. The pure nature of the human beings, if the human beings is left without being influenced by anyone, he would be upon the Tawheed of Allah, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet والسلام, when he would teach his ummah what to say before going to sleep, and he said, and he would say that والسلام, he said, make these words the last of the words that you say before you go to sleep. And if you, see, if you say these words, and if you die when you're asleep, then you will die in mutta mitta ala al-fitrah. If you die, you will die upon al-fitrah, al-fitrah, the pure nature, which is the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the deen of Islam, which is the Prophet والسلام, used to say, and if you don't catch it while I'm saying it, you can refer to it in any of the books of the authentic athkar, but never to miss it whatsoever before you go to sleep. After you say all of the athkar before you go to sleep, this is the last one. 
before you go to sleep. Allahumma aslamtu nafsi ilayk, wa wajjahtu wajhi ilayk, wa fawadtu amri ilayk, wa aljaktu dhahri ilayk, raghbatan wa rahbatan ilayk, la malja wa la manja minka illa ilayk, amantu bi kitabika alladhi anzalt, wa bi nabiyika alladhi arsalt. This is how the Prophet ﷺ said it. This is the fitrah. This is how to be upon the pure nature. That, O oh Allah, I submit myself to you. And I turn my face to you, completely focused on the concern towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to worship Him alone, to be obedient to Him. And I leave all of my affairs to you. I rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully. And I give my back, meaning that I rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't rely upon anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Seeking the pleasure of Allah alone and having the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. No refuge for a person to seek. No saving whatsoever except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is from Allah. If harm comes, if benefit comes, everything is from Allah. So if you want to save yourself from harm, if you want to gain benefit, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. No need to be turned to a human being. And this is how the Prophet والسلام, would say, and then to declare your faith that you believe in the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, which is the Quran, and that you believe in the Messenger وسلم, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. The Prophet وسلم, said, if you say this before you go to sleep, then you die in the state of fitrah, the pure nature, the deen of Al Islam. And one of the narrations says, Make it the last words that you say before you go to sleep. This is the fitrah, this is the pure nature. To be upon the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all things. Everything is from Allah. So, ilahukum ilahu wahid. Your ilah, the one that you ought to worship, is only one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After stating this very clearly, then the ayah says, فَالَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ قلوبهم منكرة وهم مستكبرون. As for those who do not believe in the hereafter, قلوبهم منكرة. Their hearts are disapproving. وهم مستكبرون and they are arrogant. They don't believe in the hereafter when they believe in Allah. As the people of Quraysh, they believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى in the ربوبية of Allah that He is the Lord of the Anami. But they disbelieve in the hereafter. They uh, disbelieved in it for. Uh, the arrogance that they have, as it's mentioned in the verse. So those who do not believe in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and He's the one that created them. So He knows what's in their hearts and He knows what's the best of their affairs and so on. قُلُوبُهُمْ munkira. Their hearts are disapproving. Their hearts is in that state of an inkar denying. And when a person denies the truth, that means a person is not convinced. That person is just in state of denial. Because this might take away some of the desires, you know, people that just want to follow their desires. They want to feel that they are burdened with actions or the guilt of committing sins and things like this. And part of it is because of the false religions that they're upon, in which they would lose hope from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who do not believe in the hereafter, their hearts are like this, disapproving. And they are in state of denial. وَهُمْ مُسْتَكْبِرُونَ While they are arrogant. So arrogance is the seed of it. So they don't humble themselves. They don't humble themselves when someone invited them to the truth. And this is how arrogance can ruin a person forever. As some of the people in Medina, like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, the head of the hypocrites, he was preparing himself to be the chief of the people in Medina. And when the Prophet was sent and he migrated to Medina, he lost that zeal, because now the Prophet والسلام, is the head of al Medina and the Prophet والسلام, is the messenger of Allah. So as a result of that, that arrogance that was in him made him refuse to believe. Just because of that hatred that he had in his heart and the envy that he got in his heart that prevented him from uh, being a believer. That he continued to be in the state of disbelief, the arrogance. The arrogance that made shaitan refuse to prostrate and to make sujood to Adam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him. And as a result of that, he was kicked out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forever. And that's why the, uh, to, uh, for a Muslim, it's haram for a believer to imitate the ways of the disbelievers. 
And one of the things that needs to be worked on constantly on a daily basis at all times is to purify our, our hearts from arrogance. And once a person claim to himself that he's not arrogant, that's a bad sign. And, it's not, and, and it doesn't mean that we should declare that we are arrogant, of course not. But we should take the remedies and the means to always be humble, which is the opposite of being arrogant. Because if we don't take these means, it's very easy to be arrogant. And Al-Kibr, as the Prophet ﷺ defined it, is not as many people think is Al-Kibr or arrogance is when you uh, look down upon people and that's it, or you act in an ignorant way. It's looking down at people and rejecting the truth. That means uh, that you, uh, you, you would reject the truth. You would belittle people. You would reject the truth. This is by itself is the sign of arrogance. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who disbelieve in the hereafter, this is how their hearts are. And that's why to purify ourselves is to stay away from arrogance. And see how the, the verse is so powerful in that state that everything is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the only one to be worshipped. And establishing the belief in the hereafter. And how is that related? If a person believes in Allah, he believes in the hereafter. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَقْسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ جَهْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ لَا يَبْعَثُ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَمُوتُ بَلَا وَعْدًا عَلَيْهِ حَقًّا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمُ الَّذِي يَخْتَلِفُونَ فِيهِ وَلِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّهُمْ كَانُوا كَاذِبِينَ إِنَّمَا قَوْلُنَا لِشَيْءٍ إِذَا أَرَدَنَاهُ أَنْ نَقُولَ لَكُمْ فَيَكُونَ Which means they swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one will be resurrected. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created them. He's the one that would resurrect them. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned the wisdom behind it. The wisdom behind it is for people to get to know what they used to differ among themselves. And for the disbelievers to know that they were liars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. We see that justice is not served perfectly on the face of earth in the lives of the people. Some people, they are oppressed and they're treated with injustice and they die in that state. And they don't get a chance to uh, to be justified in this world. And some people, they spread corruption on the face of earth, and they spread bloodshed, and they do all kinds of evil, and they die in the state of health or whatever. They don't find, or there's no punishment for them in this life. So how can someone believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he would believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would allow these people to commit injustice, and they won't be brought to the justice of Allah? This is evil, this is contradicting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in the Qur'an and also for the disbelievers to know that they are liars plus the fact of the matter is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for something to happen He would simply say for it kun fayakun for it to be and it becomes We're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth We're not talking about human being or all the human beings that get together We're talking about the creator of the heavens and the earth The one that created us and created everything from nothing Because he's the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala so which is more difficult to create from nothing or to resurrect and nothing is difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these verses are talking about how the disbelievers they have this uh, you know in their hearts the arrogance and the denial that they have and it's not because they are convinced or, the, or so it's because of their arrogance because of their forgetfulness because of uh, following their desires and so on so after mentioning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next verse Verse number 23 لا جرم أن الله يعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون إنه لا يحب المستكبرين Assuredly, Allah knows what they conceal and what they declare Indeed, He does not like the arrogant لا جرم, no doubt whatsoever Assuredly, that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they conceal and what they declare. Indeed, he does not like the arrogant. He does not love the arrogant ones. La uh, that means no doubt. This is with certainty, no doubt about this whatsoever. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they conceal and what they declare. As we heard the first verse today, verse number 19 was, Wallahu ya'lamu ma tusiruna wa ma that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you conceal and what you declare, addressing the people. And here in this verse, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no doubt that they, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what they conceal, the disbelievers, and what they declare, and what's in their hearts of arrogance. So it's also for the believers to understand that whoever uh, is a disbeliever and he dies in the state of disbelief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that they don't deserve to be a believers. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts. And if someone that is arrogant and someone in, is in state of denial and the message had reached them and they continue to be in that state, he deserves to be in our fire. This is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So leave the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You as a human being, your job is to be upon the truth and to call others to the truth and to make it very clear. As far as the punishment and the justice is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is the most perfect subhanahu wa ta'ala in His names and attributes and no one will be treated with anything less than the perfect justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it says afterwards, إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْتَكْبِرِينَ That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love al-mustakbirin or the arrogant ones. As mentioned before in the previous verse, that they are arrogant. So that also states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves uh, the believers as it's mentioned in the Quran many places. He loves the muhsaneen, the good doers. He loves the tawabin, those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he does not love the disbelievers. He does not love the mustakbirin, the arrogant ones, as it's stated in the Quran. And uh, does not love them, does not like them, is not... Uh, only or, or, or that it does not mean that he does not give them reward as some people that you might see in the tafsir no this means that he does not love those who are arrogant this is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing is the like of Allah and he's the al-hira the al-seer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how but we believe in these attributes we know the meanings of it and we say nothing is the like of Allah laysa kamitli shay'u al-sami al basir so this is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result of that, but as a result of this true attribute of Allah, yes, these people will be punished, these people are not rewarded and what is a bigger loss in this life than to be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't love and how to attain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to do the opposite of al-kibr, is to do the opposite of arrogance, is to humble oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the meaning of humbling oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to follow, to follow the truth, to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in kuntum allaha, allah, wa lakum dhunubakum. Which means if you claim that you love Allah, follow me, follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would love you and he would forgive your sins. So uh, if you truly love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you want to be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love, then truly follow the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa which following the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa this is the sign of humbleness. What prevented the disbelievers from following the Prophet alayhi wa is arrogance. They did, want, they did not want to follow anyone. Human beings, they have this tendency. They want to follow anyone. They want to follow their desires. So the arrogance among them, they would not humble themselves. And as a result of that, the arrogance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who are arrogant. That means they will be in the hellfire forever. This is the place where people were arrogant on the face of earth. They will be among the people of the hellfire. And because they were arrogant on the face of earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them in the day of judgment in a way that is so humiliating that people will step on them the same way that they would step on ants. As it's mentioned in the authentic hadith of the Prophet very humiliated, very belittled. Why? As a result of being arrogant on the face of earth. So when a believer sees this and see that in his in a lifetime those who act arrogantly and opposes the truth, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide them before they die, if they do not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before they die, there is a waiting for them a very humiliating punishment by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high. So uh, this is such a, a powerful uh, verses and signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for people to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We'll go to break inshallah ta'ala and come back with some of the lessons learned. So stay with us inshallah. Muhammadur Rasulullah Muhammadur Rasulullah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala ashrafi musareen, nabiyyana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. 
We heard the verses in Surah An-Nahl from verse number 19 to 23. After the previous set of verses that talked about the favors of Allah and the signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that should humble the human beings and make them worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And now in these verses, we heard many great benefits, and many straightforward facts that is a life changing for those who reflect upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We learned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Aleem, the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompasses everything, sometimes as in these contexts of verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions specifics. That the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what people conceals and what people declare. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing is the like of it whatsoever. No matter how much a person thinks of the knowledge of Allah, it's beyond that. To the extent of which that if something that is impossible to happen, if it happens, how would it happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Al-An'am, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا وَنَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That when they would stand by the fire, the disbelievers, that we're talking about them in these verses, when they stand by the fire that they used to deny in this life, and they used to disbelieve in the hereafter, when they stand by the fire, they would, sh they would say, we wish that we can return back to this life, to this worldly life, so that they would act differently, so that they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never return them back to this life. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ رُدُّوا لَعَادُوا لِمَا نُهُوا That if they were to return to this world, they would also return to what they have been forbidden from doing. And they are liars. Something that is amazing. You know, when someone sees the hellfire in the Day of Judgment, don't you think that they will be so sincere that if they return back to this world, they will be totally different and they would live a life of righteousness and repentance after they saw the hellfire, which the, the, the hellfire is 69 times than the fire of this world when it comes to the intense of it, intensity of it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in their hearts that if they returned to this world after seeing the hellfire, they would also return to their disbelief. And that's why the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something beyond our capacity to understand. So whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them among the people of the hellfire, they deserve it. If they're given millions of chances to come back to this world, they will continue to be in a state of disbelief. And arrogance can stop the person from believing till they see the punishment of Allah and it's too late for them. So this is how the knowledge of Allah which brings the comfort in the hearts of the believers and also to be steadfast upon the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to focus on uh, their job, meaning the believers and the callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guidance is not in your hand. Guidance is in the hands of Allah. You just convey the message and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides whoever He wills. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors those who call others to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these are part of the means. Like a parent to a child, the parent is the reason for the child to exist on the face of earth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that created him. The parent they bring food and drink and they provide for their children but the provider is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge encompasses everything which gives us the great benefit of being constantly conscious, witnessing this fact that makes a person speaks and acts whether he's alone or with others in the same way, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are tested in this life with things that would really shows who are sincere and who's not when it comes to being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when we see with our, you know, the internet and the like of this. It's very easy for a person to be alone and to see what's haram and to say what it's haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects and guides the believers. Also, one of these great benefits, uh, as the verses stated that, to, uh, to, see, see, to see how evil and despicable is associating partners with Allah. It's something that doesn't make sense. It's contradicting. You know, it's, and, and it's the mercy of Allah. It shows the mercy of Allah that how verses in the Quran to convince these people, those who associate partners with Allah, which is really they degraded themselves so much humiliated themselves so much when they would worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how that 
a shirk to refute it for us to learn this you know it's always related to the al-khalq or the creation and the same thing when it comes to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone who's the creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he's the one that deserves to be worshipped because he's the creator these things that they worship besides Allah are they creators the answer is no that means they are they do not deserve to be worshipped and that really destroys the whole concept of shirk and associating partners with Allah. And not just to the disbelievers, but also for those Muslims, those who would go to the graves and invoke them besides Allah. This is the grave of this person or that righteous person. Are they creators? Did they create anything? The answer is no. So why do you worship them? Why do you invoke them? Why do you make dua to them? Dua is ibadah. You only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so on. Why you slaughter for them? Why you... Uh, do this and that. This is all to be done to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So the issue of the relationship between al-khalq, the creation, and the ibadah, the worship, they're always related. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs to him. Al-khalq, he's the creator. And therefore the commands is also to be from him, for him to be obeyed, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so on. And that's the importance of always al-khalq. Ya yuhan nasa abudu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum O mankind, worship your Lord, the one that created you. This is the best way and this is the way of the Qur'an to establish the tawheed, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, the, uh, no one knows about the resurrection. Nobody knows about the day of judgment. Not even the angel that is responsible for blowing under the trumpet. So anyone that claims that the hour is after this, is at this year or it looks like it's that year this is all falsehood yes we are at the end of times because there are signs of the day of judgment as mentioned in the quran and in the sunnah of the prophet and many of them already happened and the first sign of the hour was the messengership of prophet muhammad so this is but then uh, nobody knows when in the day of judgment will occur we learned that the meaning of la ilaha illallah is that means there's no one worthy of worship except Allah. He's the only one to be worshipped. We know also what's in the hearts of the disbelievers if they continue to be in the state of disbelief and they die in that state. That their hearts are in state of disapproving, their hearts are in state of denial and they are arrogant. Even if that disbeliever, right, he looks or he speaks like the most humble person. He's the most kind in his manners and his dealings with even treating people in such a nice way. But the truth of the Tawheed is presented to that person and he rejected it, that person is arrogant. Because arrogance is not an attitude or a way that a person have a certain image when he's arrogant. Arrogance is to reject the truth, even if a person is the kindest to others. Just the fact that he rejected the truth, this is arrogance. The... Uh, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His knowledge encompasses everything, right, and that He subhanahu wa ta'ala is above all, the owner of all things, that should lead the people to humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Al Kibr is mentioned twice in these verses. The disbelievers are arrogant. The uh, fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love those who are arrogant. And we get to know also one of the attributes of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and He hates. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he's the most just, he's the most high, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the subject is also a uh, subject that makes the human beings in, 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 in peace with their own selves, right? Because human beings, they make up their own things that does not fit even the nature of how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. All of that is, are beautiful evidences and clear evidences for people to establish the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it doesn't stop there. And it's not just one portion of the Qur'an. These evidence are throughout the entire Qur'an. So that nobody will have an excuse whatsoever if they read the Qur'an, that they see the message of the Qur'an clearly, that this is the message of La ilaha illallah. No one is worthy of worship except Allah and to follow the way of the Prophet We'll continue inshallah ta'ala next time with more verses from this beautiful surah, Surah Al-Nahl. So till then I leave you with the protection of Allah. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته
الذين تابوا وأصلحوا وبينوا فأولئك أتوب عليهم وأنا التواب الرحيم فادعوا الله مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون يا زكريا بشرك بغلام يا أيها النبي إنا أرسلناك شاهدا 